This is Noreen Crone Findlay from CroneFindlay.com and TottyTalksCrafts.com. Today I am going to show you how to weave a tiny square, it's a very little square indeed, on the Zoom Loom. And here are my various and sundry links and things. So there's Findlay.com, where you uh, can order my um, e-patterns, my PDFs, and my e-books, and uh, other wonderful things, and um, my blog, my which is ToddyTalksCrafts.com, and that's where I post all the support material for these uh, YouTube videos. There, of course, is the uh, Earl 4 YouTube videos, which you're here already, so you know that one. And my Etsy shop, where you can also order my um, PDF patterns and ebooks. And please do, because that definitely supports the work I'm doing here. And to follow me on Facebook, there it is Facebook.com, Noreen Cronfinley Designs. And there's no dots or dashes or anything in that. Okay, so this um, video the how to weave the tiny square is because I am taking part in a fun weave along on Ravelry and uh, when I was working on my designs for the weave along I thought I really need to make some tiny squares I wonder if I can do them on the zoom loom and so of course I figured out how to do it so without further ado We'll get started. Okay, so why do I want to weave uh, teeny tiny squares for my um, winter version of the Zoom Loom Weave Along Dolly. Well, every t every uh, everything I design, I begin with just you know really can be very simple little sketches, rough sketches, little drawings, and what they do is they allow me to play with colors and shapes and to figure things out because I. Um, I really, until I have sketched something, I don't really know what it is that I am wanting to do. And so it's uh, it's my favorite um, problem solving technique. And you can see that I tried out a bunch of different colorways. I was thinking, well, it's, uh, you know, it's winter. I want her wearing uh, a winter coat. And I thought, ooh, red would be nice. But then I realized, mm, no, that looks too Christmassy. And this is being a post-Christmas winter doll. And I decide, I thought perhaps white. And then I thought, well, you know, really, winter here in Western Canada is white, but we have very blue skies sometimes. But other days we have our world, the sky is white, the snow is white. The trees are black and brown and gray. There's a lot of gray. And so I decided, well, in the bleak midwinter, we do have a lot of grays and beiges and browns. But we need to have some of that bluey, whitey showing up too in the doll. So that's why I'm going with a lot of blues and whites, but also too, some. I'm going to do quite a lot of beiges for my doll. So. You can see on all the dolls, she needed to have winter pockets. So that is why I decided I had to weave teeny tiny squares. To, uh, because she needs to have lovely pockets to keep her hands warm. It's winter, she needs to be warm. And so that's why I'm weaving teeny tiny squares on my Zoom Loom. Well, of course, they said, you know, it's... It's a Zoom Loom challenge, so or weave along. So of course it has to be all done on the Zoom Loom. And so since they don't have a teeny tiny Zoom Loom, I had to figure out how to go with teeny tiny pockets. 
So that's what this video is all about. Teeny tiny pockets. To weave the tiny square, you're going to need a few little extra tools and instruments to, to make it possible to just adapt your loom slightly so that we can weave a, a square. In this case, this one is just a touch wider than one inch tall or 2.5 centimeters uh, wide, excuse me, and about an inch tall. And as I explained to you in the previous little segment, the reason why I wanted to weave tiny uh, squares is because I wanted my doll, because it's the winter part of the weave along, I wanted my little tiny doll, to my little Zoom Loom doll, to have pockets on her winter coat. Because in the winter we need pockets. So what do we need to weave the pockets? Of course, you're going to start with your Zoom Loom and you're going to use your weaving needle in a slightly different way. You're going to lay it in the first gap here on the uh, right hand side, but then you're going to go in one uh, nail down on the left hand side. So you're going straight across and this is actually eight uh, nails up for that first gap. And you're going to then take a steel crochet hook or a knitting needle, a, a DPN, anything that will fit between the gaps. And what you want to do is you're going to place this one also eight uh, nails along. Now, so put the wider part of the hook is, here we are um, actually up at the top here, it's seven um, nails along. So, so place the the um, crochet hook in. Here we go. I had that in seven. We want it to go in eight. One, two, three, four, uh, seven. There we go. Eight to make the square. So we've got uh, eight nails. Eight nails. Is that right? Two. Five, eight, two, four, six, eight. Perfect. Now to hold your um, your hook and your needle in place, you're going to use a rubber band, and you're going to because otherwise, as you're weaving the um, crochet hook and um, and uh, needle will flop around on you and be very annoying you want them held in place. You could use tape, but I wouldn't. I don't, I just hate having tape on any loom because you can get it gumming up your loom and that's just gross. Okay, so there we go. We now have rubber bands holding the needle and crochet hook in place. Now I'm using um, Lion Brand bonbons and this is the the white from uh, the, the package of cottons and the um, sparkly blue is the acrylics. Uh, this one is from the party pack is the name and I don't remember what uh, color pack the white ones came from but you know look at your bonbons and go, yes, there's the white. So what we're going to do is we're going to weave um, the little tiny square in um, the potholder loom style rather than the um, zoom loom style of the um, old uh, vintage weave it style looms. And you can use a steel crochet hook uh, or you can use what I really like are these. They're latch hooks and I buy them at my local fabric store and they're called loop turning hooks. And you, can you see that it's got a little latch hook there? It's, it's just dandy. Oh, and I just noticed that I used the wrong crochet hook. Um, I'm going to switch this out and put the smaller size hook into the loom because I like the slightly larger one for weaving. So two, four, six, eight. There we go. In through there. Perfect. And actually I think I'll 
slip it under the under the needle. There we go. Okay, and so now what you're going to do is you're going to just take a length of the two strands held together because this is quite thin. This is like a, almost a, like a sock weight or baby yarn weight. And you're going to put that through between the first and t second peg on the, the vertical pegs on the um, uh, right hand side of the loom. You're going to reach, lift up the loom a little, reach under and pull up holding your yarn end down at the um, edge of the loom. Now you've pulled up a loop of the thread and you can use your crochet hook to help you place it on that first pin at the bottom and then pull up. Now it, the yarn automatically is going to come over the, um, I'm going to push down a little just to see if we can, sorry about the thumping around, but I think it's better if, if I'm a bit closer so you can see a little better what I'm doing. There, hopefully that's better. Okay, so the yarn automatically is going to come over the top now, so I'm going to go around the second pin from the right hand side. And again, I'll reach under, and I can use my crochet hook to make that easier. Reach under and I pull through, catch it with my finger, and then with my crochet hook I place it on the next pin. And this time it's coming over the top, so I can just take it around the pin, over the needle, pull out a bit more yarn for myself, hold it with my finger, catch it with the hook, place it on the pin, and bring it over the needle and around the next pin. Reach under with my hook, push it down to hold it just while I'm waiting to catch it with the hook, take it over, and need to untie a bit of, just a bit more of yarn from the ball. And around the last pin. There we go. Now we're going to start, I think I'm going to use my lovely little latch hook because it is faster than the um, crochet hook. Now what we're going to do is we're going to weave over the first set of loops. So that is actually, we're going under the two white strands and the two blue strands. Then we'll go over the next four, under, over, under, over, under, over. And now I'm going to go under the crochet hook along the side here, catch the yarn in the latch hook. And I'm going to just flick that latch hook with my fingernail just to close the latch hook, pull it across, and now I was up above the, um, above the, uh, you know, I was working up in this screw, so I need to come back and I'm going to place the loop onto the, f the second pin on the right hand side. Now, before I tighten up my loop, I'm going to reach through with my hook and pull the yarn ends through. That is going to give me a clean finished edge on this side. You're going to end up with four clean finished edges, which is just bliss. So now we're going to go, we went under the first set of loops uh, last time. And you can see, um, I like to work into this gap up here as long as I can. It's, it's much faster. And so I go under, uh, I went over uh, a, a set of white loops and a blue loop. Now I'm going under, and then I will continue over, under, over, 
under, over, under, and this time I'm going under the um, last set of loops, but I'm going over the crochet hook. And I pull the loops through, come back down to the next pin above where the next empty pin and again before I pull up my end I take my yarn end through this loop then I will snug up my yarn ends and push them into place with my fingernail and so of course last time I went over this time I'm going under so Go across, weaving your way across and under. And flick that latch hook closed. The lovely thing about the latch hook is that it doesn't, I just need to check to make sure I'm putting it on the right. Pin. Yes, I am. Uh, the lovely thing about the latch hook is that, you see, crochet hooks have that, they get fat, and so it puts a bit of stress on your um, pins. And here, you can see it's just too wide with the thumb grip to go through. So with um, using the, um, the um, loop turning hook, from the fabric store, I'm able to um, weave quite easily through without having to uh, um, wiggle the hook too much. Okay, I've taken my loop and my yarn ends through the last one and pull it up. And just over under, over under. Oops, I look like I have missed. I have an error there in that row. Looks like it should have been an under. So I'm going to undo that last row because on a piece this small, that mistake will really show up. And you know, the thing is, if the mistake doesn't bother you, then don't worry about unweaving it. But personally, it only takes a second to unweave it. So I'd rather make sure I, I um, don't have that error there. So there we go this time. That looks better. See, because it really showed up with um, being working on such a small scale, a small error looks pretty big. I think if you were weaving a great big piece then and you missed one set of stitches you might not really even notice it but on um, such a tiny little piece it really does show up so I will just open those up place them on the next pin there we go, take my yarn ends through. And remember, the reason why I'm taking the yarn ends through the loop on the right-hand side is to give myself a clean finished edge uh, at the end of the weaving. So I don't have to do anything else to finish that edge because when it comes off um, the loom, having the traveling thread going up the side, you have yourself a clean finished edge which is just sweet it starts getting a bit tricky when we're getting to the very end here when that last row gets to be a bit a bit tighter okay through. Just going to push my rows down. There we go. And 
as the work progresses, of course, it gets a bit more finicky. And through. Whoops, got ourselves tangled there on the left hand side. And place it over the peg. And then the ends go through. And push them, push the row down into place. The very last row, we're getting close to it, the very last row is kind of neat because the loops are folded over the, um, the weaving needle. And what we're going to do is that kind of gives us a pre-woven row for the last, uh, for the very last row. So what I'm going to be doing for that one, again, take it over the peg, pick up the thread. Now, for the last row, what I will do is take, and you can, there's two ways of doing the last row. You can either slip your weaving hook, kind of ease. You could either thread, actually I'm going to do both at the same time. I'm going to push it out so I can get my yarn ends that we've taken up all the way through here. Actually, maybe, no, will I do that? Uh, Yes, I am. Okay. And then I can take that through and as it goes through, I'm going to catch my loops with my weaving hook. So they're coming off of the needle and going on to the weaving hook. And the weaving hook has taken my yarn end through. So that yarn end has gone through. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch the yarn off the ball and take this end through here. And I will then, whoops, bump the tripod. Sorry about that. Get my scissors and snip the yarn end from the ball, pull those yarn ends completely through here, through the top row. Now, I'm going to take the piece off the loom, and we have threads from the last row that we wove, and what we're going to do with those yarn ends is catch them with the little crochet hook that was making the left hand side and then they pull down and voila, your little square is finished and all four edges are perfect. So there you have it, a tiny postage stamp size square woven on the Zoom Loom. And those, I'm gonna use those little squares to be the pockets on my winter uh, Zoom Loom weave along dolly but you could use them for any decorative motif that you'd like